Hi fellow traders, in honor of uh, earnings season, I'm going to go ahead and report my second quarter earnings. Uh, kind of go through uh, the ups and downs of the quarter and kind of share with you, you know, what I like to focus on or what numbers mean the most to me and a little bit about what we're going to be doing going forward into this this third quarter and throughout the rest of the year so if you don't care about what i've done or what i did over the last quarter then you probably want to go ahead and cut the video off and go back to enjoying your saturday but if you do uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here okay so april this was when i did the first reset um this is where we started with 1800 bucks and I didn't really have everything in place that I needed to have in place. I was not trading with the right mindset. I was still trading like I was in Speed Trader with a, you know, a well-funded account. And I was giving this things too much room. And you can see I was taking too big of a loss. Too big, you know, losses here. Even though... You know, this was 191, 157. It's not really big unless you're looking at a smaller account. So, you know, here after the first week, I um, was down 184. After the second week, was down 239. You know, hey, I was looking at, you know, just under $1,700 left. After this week, you know, we were under 1500 I mean, we were down pretty good. Well, I was down pretty good. And it was all because I wasn't using the right risk-reward tolerance. I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. So, you know, my max loss per trade was $100, which was a little bit high at this point. And I didn't really, I really should have changed it to 50 but I kind of left it at 100 to see how well I would do. And you see the last week of April after we refocused. And I did a video back in April. You can go back and see it of all the changes that I made and what I want to do and in my mindset. But, you know, fortunately, we pulled out a solid week, ended the month green. Um, albeit very... <laughs> And barely green, but we did. And, you know, I look at my weekly average and my daily average. I don't look at my daily average until the end of the month when I'm looking at my stats. Um, because I'm reporting to you guys and kind of filling out my profit calendar, I do get to see where I'm at for the week and where I'm at for the month. And if it started to become an issue... I would not share that. Um, some things I just don't talk about, don't think about because it gets into my head and it causes me to make mistakes. Um, when you're trying to hit a daily goal and you're watching your P&L, you know, you may be $25 away and you're like, hey, all I need to do, find something I can put $300 on and get about 20 cents and I'm good. But when that mentality creeps in, that's when you tend to go backwards and then next thing you know you're red on the day because you kept trying to make it up so i i just don't even look at that don't look at my pnl i could care less about it um i only look at it at the end of the day when i'm reflecting on my trades and then we kind of move on from there but you can see very very bad month my week, I, I made an average of $10 a week. And I know all these three weeks are red, but this kind of made up for it. And this is where the law of averages come in. And, you know, because it's not about what you do every day. You know, I want to see at the end of the month, I want to see an average of $100 a day is what I made. That's what I want to see. But I know over the law of averages, there are going to be days that I lose. There are going to be days that I win. So it's going to be over a long-term thing. If I say a strategy is 60% successful, 
I'm not saying if I trade 10 times, six times out of 10, every time is going to be successful because you could have 10 losses in a row and then you could have 25 winners in a row and you just, you never know. So it's got to be based on the law of averages. And that's kind of what I'm looking at at the end of the month. I kind of look to see where everything averaged out. Um, and then over a period of time, if I start to see my weekly and daily average creep down, then I'm going to start looking at what am I doing, potentially doing wrong? Is it the market or is it me? Is it my execution? So that's kind of what I'm looking at. So we got through April pretty good. May was our strong month. May was the biggest month of the quarter. Um, you know, we started out, we got back up to 18, just over 1,800. I left in that $100 max loss per trade, but I made sure I did my best to stick to my stops. And I think this one is the one that ran away from me really quick before I could even get my, my stop in. And I ended up with that deer in the headlights look. Um, I think that's the trade that that happened on. But you can see I pretty much did what I needed to do um, for the rest of the month. And having the right, managing the right, managing the trade and having the right risk reward in place and taking stocks that's going to give you the potential to make profit. Um, that's what it's all about. So we had this strong week. You see weekly average was 453.05. Um, daily average was 102.96. So, you know, in May, we hit, you know, I hit my um, average, my daily average. You know, I didn't make $100 every day. You can see there were days I, I was red. A couple of days I made $21, $24. Here's $3, $10. But over an average over the month, this is what I want to see. So if I could do that, you know, have a daily average of 102.96, you know, and my weekly average is is going to be respectable. You know, so I, I was pretty pleased with, you know, how this worked out. Now, it may not add, if you're, you know, this is not counting like June the 30th here. It's not counting the first here. You know, when I'm doing the monthly things, I'm eliminating everything else. So that's why if you're trying to figure out how it came up to this one, it should probably be more. It's, you know, how I'm figuring it out. This is a more accurate depiction of what my average week, you know, is specifically for um, May and then in June we kind of slowed down you know we had this nice week here and then this week is when I went back to let's trade with a thousand dollars that's when I got the the email from the group of traders in the room that feel like I they got left behind and all of that so this is where we kind of started over again and we had a pretty slow week but this is when everything got shut off for the summer it's what we see and we're gonna have very slow days and we're gonna have days where we have real good opportunity the key is just being in position to take advantage of that opportunity so we started this week with a hundred dollar max loss per trade then we went back to a thousand a hundred dollars is ten percent of your thousand dollar account. No way should you be risking that per trade. So going to five percent is a little bit more risky. I mean, it's still a little risky, but you gotta you gotta be able to give stocks room so that you can make money. So that's when we went to the fifty dollar per trade, and I'm gonna talk a lot more about this in the webinar tomorrow. Um, because it's essentially going to tell you, you know, this is how we have to trade to make money on a thousand dollar account. You know, no, it's no, 
you know, no BS, you know, no sugarcoating anything, you know, it's tough, but you got to be disciplined. You got to follow the process and you do that. You, you can make it. So at the end of the quarter, well, at the end of this month, you know, obviously it was very slow. Uh, we had an average of 66.90. But if I eliminate the days that I didn't trade, you know, we've got an average of 78.10, which is a little bit better. But you can't do that. You can't eliminate the days that you were in the market and you just didn't trade. Now, if you weren't there, let's just say you took the day off and you didn't even try to trade or you weren't looking to trade, then no, you probably don't want to count that. But if you were in the market and there was nothing for you to trade or you missed the trades or whatever, that has to count into your average. You want your stats to be as realistic as possible because you don't have to share them with anybody if you don't want to. But you just you want to make sure that you get an accurate depiction of what you are doing. You know, you don't want to be fooling yourself because that does you no good. It may make you feel good, but it does no good, does you no good helping you get to the goals that you have set for yourself. Um, so the total profit for the quarter was 37.11.82. On the weekly average, 271.56. The daily average for the quarter was 57.26. And remember, my daily average goal at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter, is going to be $100 a day. There's no reason. I feel that once we get um, comfortable trading our own money and we get skilled, there's no reason why we can't make that as we're trying to grow our account as a minimum. Because as we get better, that number is going to get better. And if it doesn't, then we need to start addressing the things that are preventing us from reaching that goal. So that's what I ended up in my small account and ended up, you know, like I said, we started back over with a thousand dollars and that's the plan. When we, and that's what I've been doing for the last month. When we hit August and I've given people enough time that want to participate, that want to come on board, and they want to follow, you know, this journey live. I've given them more than enough opportunities to come in. I've given you the special, you know, where you you join for a quarter and you get the rest of the year free. So you're locked in with me until December 30th. So you have plenty of time. You don't have to worry about anything running out or expiring. You know, I've given as much as I can give. So when August rolls around, we're not going to look back. We're going to keep building off of that $1,000. And we're going to go from there. So if you guys want to join in and you want to follow the journey and you want to learn right alongside, you know, because I teach every day. And, you know, you still have the opportunity. But once August hits, we're, we're just moving forward. All right, so the all-day hold account. Now, back in April, what I did was I added the swings and the all-day holds together. Now I'm separating them. Um, for this quarter here, everything's going to be separate. I've got a separate page on the website for the swings so you can keep up with what I'm in, um, what I exited, what I made on that. So I'm separating this. Um, so the numbers here in April are pretty skewed. This is the swing trades and the all day holes all in one. So, and, and this is a, a pretty decent month. You know, after April, Things do start to slow down because these all day holes and everything really kick off when earnings season is in full effect. Uh, right now, we just don't have a whole lot of volume. 
and you know I haven't really been engaged since vacation really so you know all of that starting to work itself out and we're starting to to get back on track with this but I don't keep at the end of the month I don't look at this in terms of my weekly average or my daily average none of that matters with these all day holds you know all I'm looking at is how did I end up for the quarter you know what profit did I make for the quarter if I go back and start looking at you know and here this was pretty awesome didn't have a red day in this um, I think this is the only month this year that I've traded this many days and not had a red day but May, you can see this is when I started to separate these things out. Um, and didn't have a lot of opportunities in May. You can see a lot of zeros on here where I did not trade. But when I did, with the exception of this day here, um, this was a, a pretty bad day. This was just dead wrong altogether. Here, I had about 800 and some dollars in profit but then gave it all back when I re-engaged. Um, but, you know, all in all, this was a pretty good month. It was slow. I wasn't focusing on this because I actually put more focus on day trading, which is why day trading got better in May. So I missed some opportunities here. But when I did get them, I tried to take full advantage of them. So for this month, um, 6683 which is not bad this is just adding to um, what I'm doing day trading you know this is kind of like my part-time job this in swing trading you now that's how I look at it but <clears throat> you know everything worked out pretty good this this month June again is when everything kind of shut off everything slowed down and we didn't get much only traded four times in June, but the beginning of July, you know, here's the week I was on vacation, actually caught two good all day holes on vacation. Um, this one didn't follow through as well. Neither one followed through as well. I didn't have as, as much size on it because I wasn't going to be there. This was me making money while I'm sitting on the beach. That's pretty much what it boiled down to. But I look at what I did for the quarter and, you know, this is what I put in to try and figure out, you know, where, I, where am I in terms of my financial goals for the year. And so, you know, now this is going to be separate from swing trading. So I'm going to have two separate reports at the end of the third quarter. But right now, this is kind of where we are. And this is not bad adding to what I've done. But you got to remember, you know, this is a very well-funded account. And it was really over two accounts, my IB and um, Speed Trader. But, you know, that's where it was. And, you know, I try. I always bring in the... um the trade as it's happening, especially toward the end of the day. If I'm in an all day hole, I'm done day trading. I'm going to, you know, switch over and bring up that platform and you'll see that trade on, you know, you'll see where I took it. When I told you I took it that morning and it'll still be running. You know, one thing I don't want to do is be selective in what I'm sharing with you. That's why I share my platform live every day so you guys can see it. Whether I win, whether I lose, whether I make mistakes like I did Thursday. You know, I don't try to hide those things. You guys can see it. And because that's where our learning takes place. Our learning takes place from the mistakes that we make. And that's the best way of showing it. I'm not just going to show you the trades that I took that I won on. I'm not just going to show you the live trades whenever I'm winning. You see everything because that's what it takes to learn. Um, so um, that that's it. This is all I have for 
my um, two the two accounts from last quarter. Um, don't forget about the the webinar that I'm doing tomorrow. I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave the um, this, you don't have to register. I'm just gonna leave the link and the information in the description part of this video. So all you have to do is click on and get income. And it's, you know, again, it's going to be about day trading with $1,000. You know, a lot of the things that you're going to need to do in order to maximize the potential of that money that you have that you're trading. You know, there's a right way. I think, well, there's a couple of right ways and there are a lot of wrong ways to manage this. So I'm going to share the way that I feel is the best way to do it and how I did it and how you're going to see me do it um, going forward. So you guys have a great Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And for you guys that I see tomorrow, I'll see you guys tomorrow. If not, we'll be back at it on Monday.